What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to yet another episode of the Dog Pound Discussions. I am Derek, and of course, uh, I'm here with Kung Fat Panda. How are you doing, you sir? Uh, I'm doing great. <laughs> Your intros just keep getting funnier and funnier every week, Derek. It's so hilarious. Mm. I just Oh, just wait. I haven't even started calling you planets yet. Just wait. We're oh, getting okay. there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, at least you have normal sized glasses on this week. Welcome back to the mm. real world, fucking SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay, yeah. Well, at least I don't look like I'm bald. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, see there he is, Kung Fat Panda. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we we got a lot we got a lot to talk about here. The NFL has been on crack cocaine, just absolutely insane around the league. No pun intended. Um, None of you will understand that, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the NFL's been absolutely insane, and I was texting my buddy. He's a Steelers fan, and I was like, hey, I'm happy a little bit that you got Russ. I still think he can be good, but, man, my number one nightmare is that the Steelers go out and they trade for Justin Fields. Well, guess what? Here we are, uh, 316 day, Tino's birthday, and... You know, shout out to you. Happy birthday, fat ass. Hope you had a good one. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so on Tino's birthday, the Steelers go out and they quite literally trade absolutely nothing and land Justin Fields. Um, just getting into this one, I, I am very, 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 very pissed off at this. And it's not at the Steelers. I'm not mad at the Pittsburgh Steelers for making this move. This is a move I would make. If I was heading up the Pittsburgh Steelers, if I was their GM, what I'm upset at is we're sitting here in this crazy NFL free agency. Guys are getting traded. There's teams signing big time players. And, you know, we're going to talk about Caleb Williams and the Bears and what that all means here soon. But Chicago was always trading Justin Fields. And I feel like the NFL knew that everybody knew that. But with all the quarterback moves made around the league, <clears throat> Minnesota, Seattle, uh, Denver, the Giants, uh, the Raiders, the Patriots, there are countless teams that are sitting here currently, and obviously, yes, the Seahawks traded for Sam Howe, whatever, um, and there's others who have filled their holes at quarterback, but there are countless teams around the NFL that need starting quarterbacks. And Justin Fields sat out there on the market and sat out there on the market. Teams knew he was available. And you had Desmond Ritter go to, where did he go? He went to the Arizona Cardinals. I would argue that Rondale Moore for Desmond Ritter is more than what the Steelers gave up for Justin Fields. The Washington Commanders, if I'm not mistaken, got more for Sam Howell than the Bears got for Justin Fields. The Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll talk about this one. Traded Kenny Pickett and got more than what the Chicago Bears got for Justin Fields. So we sit here today and Russell Wilson is the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Justin Fields is the backup. And I don't blame Pittsburgh. I look around the league and I blame all of you owners and all of you GMs because the Steelers never should have had this opportunity. And it is it is flat out bullshit that they had the chance to get Justin Fields as a backup. And what I don't understand is like, it's one thing if you're in a situation like the Philadelphia Eagles, for example, and Jalen Hurts is the guy, right? You trade for Kenny Pickett, you know, Kenny Pickett's a backup. If, if some of these teams traded for Justin Fields, the fans would be clamoring for him to be the starter. It would be a lot of pressure for him to be the starter. I understand that. I really do. But what are we doing here? You're telling me the Las Vegas Raiders wouldn't rather have Justin Fields than currently Aiden O'Connell? And, oh, what are you going to do? You're going to go out and, and draft J.J. McCarthy to suck and blow up your team for the next five-plus years? Like, it is amazing to me how the Pittsburgh Steelers were able to pull this off. They had no business even being, this even being an option. Like, this never should have been on the table. And now Justin Fields goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, Tony, I'll get to you here one second. 
But everybody's talking about, oh, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid of Justin Fields? He sucked in Chicago. Let me tell you something. The Chicago Bears did absolutely nothing to help Justin Fields while he was there. This offseason, they go out and they make a bunch of moves to help out Kayla Williams. They don't help out Justin Fields. And Justin, despite having no offensive line, little to no weapons, still was okay. He was still solid. I don't think he's completely broken. And when you sit here and ask the question, why are you so upset that Justin Fields is a Pittsburgh Steeler? Because we have been through the ringer at quarterback as Browns fans. We have watched Brandon Whedon, Deshaun Kaiser, Johnny Manziel, and the list goes on and on and on. And the Steelers post Big Ben have had Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett. That's it, right? Unless I'm forgetting something. Mitch Trubisky, but that's it. That's it. We've had this long list, and all we want as Browns fans, and as fans in the NFL, because nobody likes Steelers. Nobody likes the Steelers except they're terrible fans. But everybody wants the Steelers to go through quarterback purgatory because they deserve it. And here we are a couple quarterbacks later, and they have a former Super Bowl winning quarterback in Russell Wilson as their starter, and a guy coming out of college who was electric, who had an arm, who made plays with his legs and comes into the NFL with the Bears. And is he perfect? No, but he's a playmaker. And he's a guy who could potentially, if things don't go right with Russell Wilson, there's a young starting quarterback, potential franchise quarterback, stepping in for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's utter bullshit that this was even possible to happen. It, it's insane. It, it is absolutely insane. and. You know, everybody who's like, oh, field sucks, get ready. Get ready, because odds are he's probably going to be the starter at some point. What does that mean? I don't know, but I don't even like the possibility that they have their quarterback. Kenny Pickett sucked. Justin Fields is way better than Kenny Pickett. So take that for what you will. But, Tony, the Steelers somehow managed to get Russell Wilson and Justin Fields uh, and completely revitalize their quarterback room and their situation at quarterback. What was your reaction when you saw the trade, and what's your reaction now <laughs> that the dust has kind of settled a little bit? Well, now that your long-winded, you know, eight and a half sorry. minute rant, I'm pissed. I'm over, pissed. I really am. I'm sorry. Obviously, I was kind of unhappy as well. Um not happy about the idea of the Steelers getting Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, as I've said on, you know, past podcasts. It's, a, it's, it's, you know, one of those things that it's like, does God hate the Cleveland Browns? And I, I don't want to go this route and potentially offend people, but kind of ridiculous how unlucky this franchise has been. And it seems like ever since we've gotten good, the teams around us in the AFC North have gotten three times as better over the same course of like span of time uh fields apparently isn't going to start right away in pittsburgh i don't know if i believe that i don't know if that's just mike tomlin you know kind of trying to be nice to russell wilson and be like oh no we believe in you because i love russell wilson but let's be honest he seems like one of those players that needs to have that positive confidence otherwise he just looks bad which could be why he struggled in denver with sean payton and nathaniel hackett but a hot topic throughout the rest of the offseason is going to be this Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback battle. So if you are Mike Tomlin, if you are the Steelers, do you want? are you starting Justin Fields? Are you starting Russell Wilson? I say you let him battle it out in camp. I think either way, whoever doesn't start is going to get some wrinkles worked into the playbook for them throughout games. And the Steelers definitely have a two-headed monster, and it, it pains me to say this, but I really do think we have the worst quarterback in the AFC North. As frustrating as that is to say, Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson are right there on par for third and fourth. I would still have to put Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson one and two, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of pushback online for that. But again, and I've said this multiple times, and it's been and Deshaun, please don't block me on Twitter for this. Uh, <laughs> You got to show me something. I know you were, you know, you were doing well before you got hurt, but I need consistency, man. 
I just want some consistency out of you. I know you're a great quarterback. I know you have the ability to play well. You got to show it on the field, and you got to stay healthy. And maybe you could e- you could easily be the top quarterback in the in the co- in the division, conference, league, whatever by the end of the year if you stay healthy and consistent. But like I said, you know, Derek, Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, who would yeah. you start with? Open up the season if you're the Steelers. Well, um, it, it, it's a tough conversation because you don't necessarily have to start either one you're paying both of them pennies on the dollar in terms of quarterback value in the nfl but man it it, russell wilson's going to be the starter that's already pretty much been announced i mean that can that can definitely change without a doubt if russell wilson comes out in camp and just absolutely sucks um you know i who knows who knows? Maybe there is a world where Justin Fields could become the starter week one. But without a doubt, just gut feeling, Justin Fields will start for the Pittsburgh Steelers at some point. I just got that Absolutely. feeling in my stomach that at some point he's going to be the starter. The problem is not necessarily this season because I think odds are one of these two quarterbacks could potentially be uh, long term for the Steelers. Like that That's the scary part about the whole situation is whether if it's Russell Wilson and he kind of revitalizes his career post Denver in uh, Pittsburgh with the Steelers, or if it's Justin Fields becoming what we thought he could be coming out of college at Ohio state, um, you know, with the bears, that's the scary thing, Tony. It's horrifying that, you know, and in a division, you mentioned it, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson's here. Uh, Deshaun Watson, and now you have Russell Wilson and Justin Fields here. That's scary. That's scary because regardless of how bad the Bengals have had of an offseason, at least in my opinion, uh, the Ravens have made some additions. The Bengals themselves made some additions. Who knows how they work out? The Steelers have made additions. The Browns pretty much kept everybody and didn't really add a whole lot other than Jerome, or not Jerome Baker, Huh? should have been. Um, oh, Jordan Hicks and Jerry Judy, it's like this is a dogfight every week. Every time anybody in the division plays each other, it's going to be a dogfight. Pittsburgh was the odd man out, and it's scary that they now are in that conversation. So who do you think should start? I mean, it, it seems obvious maybe Russell Wilson, but I don't know. I would go with the experienced Russell Wilson. And I just want to, you know, throw this out there. It is trending on Twitter that the Steelers are potentially talking to Mike Williams as well. And if that happens, oh. uh, it, the NFL is unfair. If that happens. The AFC mm-hmm. North is going to be a gauntlet week in, week out in divisional matchups. It's ridiculous how much this team is loading up. All And it, you know, the crazy part about it is, like, all to stop Patrick Mahomes in the Kansas City yep. Chiefs. Yep. The whole, the whole conference is just the one thing in mind. Stop Mahomes. Stop Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. That's literally what it is. <laughs> shout, out, and shout out to Taylor Swift because without her, the NFL cap probably wouldn't run up by about 30, mm-hmm. 40 million over the offseason. So, you know, she's making a lot of these moves possible for these teams to just absolutely load up. <laughs> it's so, never, know. never thought you would be able to say that. No. It, it's crazy. But, Looking at the offseason, it is a reality. Like some of these teams are loading up. And let's go to Chicago real quick. A move that was made, uh, you know, this past week. Something that I didn't see coming. I know the Chargers have a horrible situation with their cap right now. Uh, but Keenan Allen was traded to the Chicago Bears for, I believe, a fourth round pick. So we're, when you look at it right now, what the Bears have done this offseason, I know they haven't necessarily did anything on the offensive line, but adding Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Gerald Everett, they have the first overall pick, which I, you know, thank you, Tino, for my $50, you fucking moron. It was always going to be Caleb Williams. So anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, RIP Justin Fields. But anyway, they hold the number one overall pick and the ninth pick. They still have the ninth pick. So, whether if that be receiver, whether if that be offensive line help, um, you know, wherever direction the Bears want to go with the ninth pick, 
they have very clearly done more to help Caleb Williams um, than Justin yep. Fields. And I think that is that is definitely unfair to Justin. However, I got to be fair here. I am definitely a proponent that the Bears should draft Caleb Williams. They will. Um, and it, it is the right decision. It makes too much sense to restart the quarterback clock. They were given the number one overall pick by the Panthers, as well as all these other additions that they've been able to make, uh, including Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, I believe. Um, but listen, I think Caleb Williams will succeed with the Bears year one. Do I think it's going to be perfect? Probably not. But I think it's become popular to hate him. Uh, and speaking of becoming popular to hate him, Tony, you hate Caleb Williams, so I've heard. <laughs> so even yeah. with the Bears, the uh, Bears additions, do you think Caleb can succeed in year one with Chicago? What do you think happens? Um, uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting. We'll see which Caleb Williams shows up. But if I can touch on the Justin Fields thing, he got a really bad deal from the Chicago Bears. He was never given a fair chance. I would have rocked with Justin Fields this season if I was the Chicago Bears. I think they're really screwing the poor guy, and it's unfair to him. But, you know, business is business. That's just the way the NFL is. And, yeah, I do hate Caleb Williams. I think he's a prima donna. I'm very biased, though. I don't like USC. I'm a Notre Dame fan. That's very well known. Uh, it just depends what version of Caleb Williams we get. You know, I hope the Windy City doesn't mess his nails up when he's got them freshly painted. and Maybe he'll show up ready to play football. But – you got to take him at number one, obviously. He's a generational talent. I'll admit that even though I hate the guy. But I really do think the NFL is going to be too much for him, and I think he's going to be one of those generational talents that flames out. And Chicago is going to realize that they screwed up pretty bad getting rid of Justin Fields in this situation. As for what they do with the ninth overall pick, I don't know. But DeAndre Swift can help them in the backfield. Keenan Allen is going to be a good threat. Keenan Allen has always excelled no matter where in LA or, you know, San Diego when they were in San Diego, Allen will be a solid piece to add with DJ Moore. I think they will be hell for opposing defenses this season, but I do think the Chicago bears screwed up by getting rid of Justin Fields. And I think Caleb Williams may have short-term success, but long-term I don't think it's going to happen. I think his ego and his personality and his everything else is going to get in the way of him being a successful NFL player. He's He gets broken down by strong defenses, as we've seen in the Notre Dame-USC game last year. And after the game, he had to hop into the stands and cry on his mom. So, you know, I don't think he's going to be good in the NFL. I think the Bears screwed up, basically. But as for screwing up, yeah, Let's no talk kidding. about how bad Andrew Barry screwed up. Because how do you let Jerome Baker, a Cleveland native who wants to come back to Cleveland, not re not sign with the Cleveland Browns? And I was upset at first, but I was downright pissed off when I seen that he got seven million dollars, mm -hmm. and we paid Devin Bush instead of Jerome Baker. Why? Andrew Barry, I love him as a GM. I think he's a fantastic GM. I don't think he drafts the greatest. He does good at building teams through free agency and trades. But I definitely think this is one that got away, and I think this is a massive mistake by the Browns front office to not bring a guy like Jerome Baker in. Derek, what's your thoughts on the subject? Yeah, I mean, the most important thing is a lot of – um a lot of people from other fan bases will say, oh, nobody wants to go to Cleveland. Why would anybody want to go to Cleveland? And a lot of people don't understand how everything has changed here. Like, it's no longer uh, the 0-16, 1-15 and teams, right? You know, we just went 11-6 last year with damn near nobody, right? And it gets stated a lot, but... I feel like it's important to reiterate the Browns legit had both offensive tackles out Nick Chubb out Deshaun Watson out uh, multiple backup quarterbacks out you bring in Kareem Hunt and then he was a little banged up at times and then on the defense nobody was out permanently for the most part other than a couple guys Shelby or uh, Maurice Hurst got hurt and was had to sit out Grant Delpit got hurt but 
you know, regardless, the Browns were still successful with backups and a lot of backups. So this team is good. Like we are a good football team. We are a contending football team. And when you have guys who are on the open market, who are great quality talents at a position of need. And I I agree with you hundred percent. When I saw he signed for $7 million, I was legitimately pissed because again, you got a guy who's a great talent who wants to come here. Why did you not make that work? Like, how did that not happen? And I understand people say, yeah, you want the rollover. You want to save money. But listen, based on all the Brown signings, based on the contracts we have, we're in a one to two year window where you got to get the most success that you can have. That's the reality of the NFL. You got to make the most with what you have. And in my opinion, at least signing Jerome Baker was a must. And people want to say he's not a good fit. I've seen some people say he's a backup. That is absurd. I've heard people say he's overrated. If anything, Jerome Baker is massively underrated, in my opinion. I think you're yep. going to see him pretty shine a lot. Like, I think he could be a good, really good player on a defense there in Seattle. That's not bad at all. They have some tools on that defense. So, um, I, I'm, I'm pissed. We're on Isaiah Simmons season. I think, uh, you know, if you can sign him cheap, you do it. Absolutely. That's something I think the Browns should be on. Uh, if you would like Isaiah Simmons propaganda, follow chunk. Um, if you don't know who Chunk is, he's a little leprechaun. It is St. Patrick's Day. Happy so, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, you know, if you see a little person running around stealing stuff from you, it's probably Chunk. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> back to the Browns here. The Browns made an interesting move, a very interesting move this uh, this past week, and that is Mike Vrabel, former head coach of the Tennessee Titans. Uh, former Ohio State player slash coach uh, coming to Cleveland, and he's being hired as a, a basically assistant head coach, personal consultant role. Um, but this is this is fascinating, Tony, because last year, excuse me, we had Jim Schwartz, who was kind of in this role for the Tennessee Titans. And uh, Jim Schwartz obviously takes the job here in Cleveland and assistant coach of the year does a fantastic job and really sparks this defense. And Vrabel, I can't believe he didn't get a head coach job. Genuinely. Like, I can't believe he didn't get a head coaching job in the NFL. Everybody who has played with him, played for him, and or has coached with slash been around Mike Vrabel has said nothing but glowing reviews. Nothing but glowing reviews. So I think this is fantastic. He was sitting out there. You bring him in. And Tony, when you look at it from this perspective, Kevin Stefanski now has two former head coaches on his coaching staff to help him out and assist with the head coaching needs. But offensively, you hire Ken Dorsey. He's going to help out Stefanski massively as far as the offensive side of, side of things. And then Tommy Reese being hired also same thing there so kevin stefanski's got two guys for him offensively to help out a lot he's got two guys who are former head coaches to help with the little things there and now jim schwartz as great as he already was now has extra help over there with him with mike Vrabel being a defensive guy i see no negatives in this at all and ryan day fuck around and find out because Mike Ravel will be replacing you if you do not succeed at a high level. But so. Tony, Mike Vrabel is on the Cleveland Browns coaching staff. What what was your reaction and what's your what's your thoughts on this one? Um, I'm okay with the move. I like it. And I share your sentiments when you say that you're surprised you didn't get a head coaching job. I'll add to it and say I'm surprised you didn't get a head coaching job in college either. I know a lot of Ohio State fans are pounding the table wanting him to replace Ryan Day, which I don't think is a good move. Because, you know, I kind of like watching Ryan Day lose to Michigan every year, so I hope that kind of continues. Love you, Derek. 
Anyways, yeah, I like the move. It's good for the Browns. It's good for Jim Schwartz. It's good for Stefanski. And just to correct you, it's not Tommy Reese. It's Tommy Reese, former Notre Dame quarterback. You got to put some respect on his name there. Uh, but, yeah, overall, I really do like the move by the Cleveland Browns to bring in Mike Frable. And as far as things that I don't like, let's get into our next topic. Mm-hmm. Devin Bush. Why? Why, 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 why we could have fucking signed Jerome Baker. He was right there, and he wanted to be here, and we go get Devin fucking Bush. Why? Mm-hmm. Awful signing. Huge mistake. I understand it. We need linebacker depth, but we could have done so much better. And Wesley kind of put this in – shout out, Wesley. Kind of mm-hmm. put this in perspective for me earlier. Yes, he probably won't play a ton of snaps, but that's not the point. The Browns' linebacking core has been a problem with all the exits over the offseason and a bit of a problem last year. And, yes, we've kind of shored up our missed tackle rate, but we could have done so much better. I I just – I don't like adding Devin Bush to this team, and I feel like there were better options out there. And if we get Isaiah Simmons, I will be so happy. But at this point, I'm not holding out any hope because they just – the Browns let me down every time. Derek, how do you feel about Devin Bush? Yeah, I feel, I feel I feel let down for many reasons. You you obviously um addressed the big one and it's Jerome Baker. And again, just to go back to it, you had an opportunity there and you whiffed on it. You you whiffed on a big opportunity. And the Browns like they could have figured it out. You know, if you want to talk about money, we've seen Andrew Barry come out here and structure contracts in a way that it works. Right. Even if the Browns pay it down the road, which some people hate, some people want to pay it up front, you know, whatever. But it's like, hey, it's like almost affirming contracts. It's like, hey, I don't want to pay all this up front right now, but, you know, down the line, I'll be in a better spot and I can I can do that. Um, You know, that's what the Browns do. That, that's just what we do. But instead, Andrew Berry comes out and has it worked out in the past? Sure. With some guys. But you signed Devin Bush, and Tony, I mean, you know as well as I do, Devin Bush was a monster in college. He he yep. was a great, great player in, at Michigan. Um, But he's coming into the NFL. He was the – I want to – he was a high pick for the Steelers, so I forget what pick he was picked. I want to say nine. I want to say like third – was it just inside was the top it? ten? Uh, I don't know. First round pick. High first round pick. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was a high pick and it was worth it. Like I remember, you know, as a as a Buckeye, I remember being like, oh man. Like they they got a good linebacker. And if you'll remember, um Devin Bush was kind of their plan to re- this is terrible to say this. Kind of their plan to replace Ryan Shazier. You know, when everything happened with him and it just didn't work out. And Devin Bush has gone through multiple injuries, and I think he's lost that speed. He's lost some of his athleticism and agility that made him so good. And he has flamed out. Like, he has flamed out, you know, with the Steelers. And again, does he hate the Steelers now? Yes. Is that a positive? Absolutely. But is that the be-all, end-all? No. I'm going to look at the play. And when he got signed to Seattle, I was like, okay, maybe he can do something. Right. Maybe he can be impactful for that Seahawks defense. Again, I mentioned it earlier. Defense, it ain't that bad. They have some tools. I thought he could be a a positive for them. He didn't play. He barely got on the field. And it's like Andrew Berry loves to take flyers on former first round picks, guys who have a lot of talent. But that's all well and good. But I think in this instance, he's done. Like, I think Devin Bush is fizzling out. And it's not, you know, a knock on him or his play. It's just the injuries. Injuries tear guys down. And Devin Bush hasn't had the chance to start his career before he got injured. Um, You know, Tony, I a lot of people think he's going to be a rotational guy backup. 
I don't believe that. I'll be honest with you. I don't believe that that's the plan with the Browns. We're going to run a lot of 4-2-5, but I think the plan at linebacker is JOK, Jordan Hicks. Shout out to you, Dipple. I know you're a big fan, big fan. Number one fan of the Jordan Hicks fan club. Uh, and then Devin Bush. Like, I, th- I legitimately think that's the plan. If that's the plan, oh boy. Oh boy. And yeah, the front four are going to mask it and the back half and the secondary, they're going to help. But I mean, Tony, how can you go into the season with Devin Bush as a starter? I don't know. I just feel like the Cleveland Browns don't value the linebacking position and it shows and maybe it works out. Maybe we just rely on our defensive line and Miles Garrett and Zedarius Smith and Alex Wright and Shelby Harris and all those guys you know, on the D-line to get the job done to get the quarterback, where we don't have to worry about linebackers. Maybe we could just have coverage linebackers. Maybe JOK does just enough to look good, but I hate the idea of going into the season with Devin Bush as a starting linebacker, and that's the unfortunate truth is he is going to start, he is going to get likely more snaps than people say he's going to get, which fucking sucks. I mean, but sometimes it's the price you pay. Yeah, it, it's it's a disaster. It's a weird situation. And, you know, everybody wants to say, oh, trust AB, trust AB. Well, listen, I said it with Deshaun Watson. I'm going to say it again here. I like Deshaun Watson. I like AB. I think AB is, is great. I think he, you know, he's a young, upcoming GM who's proven himself and done a lot of great things. But at the same time, am I blindly going to advocate for every move he makes and just assume it's going to work out. No, because not every move works out, no matter how good of a GM you are. Um, And a move that so far you look at and you say, hmm, is it worked out? Deshaun Watson has been a little bit of like, you know, we talked about it. The problem is not really the play, right? We've seen Deshaun play well, but he's played 12 games in two seasons and the Browns last year went through a billion different quarterbacks and Tony it seems as if the Browns are willing to do everything they can to have competency at the very minimum at the quarterback position because today some news that came across your screen a little bit shocking news here at least for me so the Browns sign Tyler Huntley former Ravens backup pro bowler, Tyler Huntley, uh, to the Cleveland Browns quarterback room. Um, This is fascinating because now you have a situation here at quarterback uh, where Deshaun Watson's your starter, but behind him is Jameis Winston, who's not a bad backup by any means. Um. And now Tyler Huntley. Um, Tony, well, crazy. one thing to touch on that is I'm pretty sure the Jameis Winston move is not official yet. This could just be a backup plan in case Winston or the Cleveland Browns back out of the Winston deal. But I like it. I can't say hey, it's never a bad idea to have three NFL caliber quarterbacks. And I love DTR. I just don't think he's ready yet. I think he has a long way to go before he's ready. I think a stint on the practice squad will do him well. Now, I'm not going to sit here and beat the table and quit the podcast over Joe Flacco. I'm okay with letting Joe Flacco walk. I'm okay with letting Joe Flacco walk. A lot of people are doing that right now, and you people are clowns. Sorry. I'm I'm sorry. (laughs) Disclaimer on this side of the podcast. (laughs) Nothing to do with me. Uh, But, uh. Anyways, yeah, no, I love the idea of having a third competent backup quarterback, especially if the Jameis deal falls through. Tyler Huntley can be your number two. We've seen that he has talent. We've seen that he is capable of making plays when he comes in for Lamar Jackson. I like the signing. And, you know, worst comes to worst, let's say he is our third string. We have our scout team quarterback that's set behind Lamar Jackson and can mimic Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Perfect. Especially when we Mm. play the Ravens. Good scout team quarterback right there. Well, you know, Tyler Huntley may or may not be a fit for the Cleveland Browns. The one thing that is certainly a fit is two-one transition. 
great. So head on over to <laughs> two one fits.com to get all your Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Cavs, Cleveland Guardians, Lake Erie, City of Cleveland merch, Columbus Blue Jackets, Columbus Crew, Dog Bulls, Dog Bandanas, anything you could possibly want. And here we fucking go. DF Sports merch. <laughs> This man will not let me get through an ad read without. <laughs> yeah, we know. Derek has merch on the website. Congratulations. 2onefits.com. Head on over. <laughs> Find your fit at 2onefits. Uh, we're going to transition into some NFL draft and some free agency news and some more notable news around the NFL that we did not get a chance to touch on earlier. Uh, Hollywood Browns going to the Kansas City Chiefs. Huge. Mm. It almost seems unfair. That offense is like Thanos at this point. You got Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Isaiah Pacheco, She Rice, and then a superstar speedster in Hollywood Brown that we know is capable of making big plays when he has a good quarterback. And he has a better quarterback than he's ever had in his career now in Patrick mm-hmm. Mahomes. So, Derek, how do you feel about Hollywood Brown? And then afterwards, what else do you think the Cleveland Browns need to do to keep up with a team like Kansas City? Well, the funniest thing I saw from the whole thing was there was a Chiefs fan who said, um, I forget if it was on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, one one of the social media platforms, and some Chiefs fan commented under uh, another Chiefs fan post about the Chiefs getting Hollywood Brown, and he said, no, you fucking moron, we didn't sign Hollywood Brown, we signed Marquise Brown, so... You know, as horrible as the Cleveland Browns fan base is, uh, it was good to see some stupidity from other fan bases, which, of course, we see on the regular uh, with our friends on the timeline who are Steelers, Bengals and or Ravens fans. Um, But it was good to see around the NFL some stupidity. But anyway, yeah, Hollywood Brown is a is a great fit. I mean, you saw what they did with speed and Tyreek Hill. I mean, obviously yep. hollywood brown ain't tyree kill but he he's a damn good receiver i think he's better than what he gets credit for this is a guy we wanted to possibly sign um and it, it's a great fit it's a great fit for him i'm glad he's out of arizona hopefully he can kind of show who he can be and also tony the chiefs hold a first round draft pick and i got news for you there's a billion receivers in this draft so if they did it with horrible receivers, they add Marquise Brown, there is a possibility they could add another one. Maybe they go corner. I don't know. But your second part of your question there, what do the Browns need post-free agency slash currently in free agency? Well, we are, uh, we're all kind of trying to push this narrative now that Andrew Barry was too much of a bitch to sign Jerome Baker. Sign Isaiah Simmons. Sign Isaiah yep. Simmons. He is, you know, the, if Andrew Barry wants to take a flyer on a former first round pick who's kind of flamed out, Isaiah Simmons is the one you need to take a flyer on, not Devin Bush. This is a guy who is a safety, strong safety linebacker hybrid. He would fit a role for the Browns similar to kind of like JOK, where he can kind of play all over the place. Now, is he JOK? No. But you can probably sign him dirt cheap because he's still on the open market. Guys are going cheaper now on one-year deals. This is a guy you absolutely should go take a flyer on. We love versatility. Andrew Barry loves versatility. Jim Schwartz loves versatility. He would be a perfect, perfect fit, and it wouldn't cost a whole lot. Um, So just like 2-1 fits, perfect fits over there, a perfect fit here in Cleveland if the Browns were to get uh, get Isaiah Simmons. Outside of him, Tony, in free agency, I don't think there's really, I, I don't know. We bring back Rodney McLeod, so safety, that's kind of um, done. How would you feel about a potential addition of Michael Thomas? Okay, so I like Michael Thomas. I, I think I think he still has something left in the tank. I really do. But my problem with doing a move like that. And this is the same thing for uh, Mike Williams. Like I, I just think the Browns need long-term security at the receiver position. And as deep as the draft is, I think, 
I think you got to go receiver in the draft. I don't think you can afford to sign a guy to a one year and add him to Mari Cooper, Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore, who you got to make decisions on. I just, I don't think that makes sense. But as far as free agency goes, Tony, is there anybody else linebacker wise that you want? Like, what are we doing here? I'm okay with Isaiah Simmons if we bring him in. That's about where we're at as far as that's concerned. Other than that, you know, I'd take a flyer on Michael Thomas if it's possible if the money's correct. No, I'm okay with it. The problem is we have a quarterback and other position players that have just taken such a big bite out of our salary cap. And speaking of taking bites out of things, well, you know, the birthday boy (laughs) over the weekend, Austino, is back with Another segment of Austino's Brownie Bites, and we just hope that he's sober enough by now because the last we heard from him, he was sleeping on the ground somewhere because he enjoyed his birthday. Shout out to Austino. We apologize for contributing to your early onset diabetes, but we love you. Happy birthday, big boy. And again, thank you, Austino, for another exhilarating segment. I hope you're enjoying these brownies. We can't wait to see you in about a month. Hopefully you're still up in the mood to eat the brownies. <laughs> when you put um, on 70 pounds. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So Derek, you know, the Browns have a lot they should address in the NFL draft. And what positions do you think they should target in the upcoming NFL draft? Yeah, I. so the problem for me with free agency for the Browns is not that it's been bad. Like, it, it hasn't been that awful. Like, it... It's just been we brought back the same guys. We haven't really made a whole lot of additions. Jerry Judy's by far the biggest addition, which is great. I love it. I'm all obviously all on board for that. But the concern I have, and we brought it up many times, is I think you've kind of put yourself in a hole here for the draft. Um, Because in my opinion, Tony, I again, I still think the Browns need to draft receiver. I'm tired of us picking receivers later. I know it's stacked. I know it's amazing draft class, but Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett, Xavier Worthy, um, one of those guys falls to you. And it's not just those guys, Troy Franklin. There's many others, but if one of those guys falls to you, I would pick them. But the Browns have put themselves in in a spot right now where if Jevin Bush is your fucking starter, you got a massive hole. Like the Browns Absolutely. have massive holes at linebacker. I wanted Trenton Simpson. I was begging the Browns to draft him last year. He goes to the Ravens. I wanted Dorian Williams, guy who went later in the draft. He goes to the Bills. He's been good. Ivan Pace, a guy out of Cincinnati who's close, kind of. I mean, in Kentucky, close enough. Um, who <laughs> is a guy you could have drafted. He's been great for the Vikings. And the Browns didn't pick a single fucking one of them. And now we sit here for this draft and it's like, yeah, you kind of got to pick somebody at the linebacker spot. And there's not really a whole lot like junior Colson is okay. I think he's probably the best of the bunch. Peyton Wilson. He he's, those are probably top two. Um, you know, Jeremiah Trotter is okay, but I'm not blown away by any of these guys. So I think you have a huge hole at, at linebacker. So that's receiver and linebacker. The Browns have met with a lot of offensive guards. They're going to have to plan for life post uh, Wyatt Teller, most likely. That's probably position. And then Tony, running back. The Browns get Naeem Hines. He's not a running back. He's a kick punt returner, uh, receiver out of the backfield type. Yeah. Running back's a spot they need to address. I it, I agree. A lot of holes. A lot of holes. I definitely I think. I, I definitely think we need to address the running back position, the linebacker position, and some more wide receiver depth. So we're on the same page with that. Um, you know, as for speaking of potential life after Wyatt Teller, <laughs> our uh, our honky of the week, the offensive line depth piece, and that is because our honky of the week winner for episode number. Four mm-hmm. already four episodes. How crazy! Who would have thought of dog pound? How have we made it this long? <laughs> yeah, we, we we thought we'd be fired by now. Uh, yeah. Michael Dunn, congratulations! You are the fourth winner of the Honky of the Week award, following in such prestige as winners <laughs> like Tyler Simmons and 
Cooper DeJean and <laughs> Howie, Howie Roseman. Roseman. Congratulations, you are the fourth winner of the Honky of the Week Award. You know, walk around with pride saying you are <laughs> the Honky of the Week. Hey, Michael <laughs> Dunn, not a bad player. Good depth. Good job. Uh, good job bringing him back, Andrew Barry. But uh, yeah, so that pretty much damn near wraps up the show. Uh, the NFL draft is in pissing distance, so we'll talk more about that. Um, free agency, I'm sure, as life goes on, everything's crazy every other day in the NFL. Something's going to happen. We're going to talk about it. Hopefully the Browns sign Isaiah Simmons. Probably yeah. not, because they want to disappoint us. But whatever if, happens, we'll talk about it. If the Cleveland Browns don't get Isaiah Simmons, I'm scared Nathaniel Cleary will drive his trailer in. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Well, after the storms that have happened in Ohio from Michael Cozy breathing, I don't know how Nathaniel Cleary's trailer is still there. I'm just kidding. Love you, Cozy. Um, but yeah. Uh, I thought we were supposed to keep the inside jokes to a minimum. Well, hey. It's hard to keep the inside jokes to the minimum when they're causing F5 tornadoes. So Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's our that's our thing. Uh anyways, see you guys next week. Save the dog chug, by the oh way. Oh my god. Go Browns. Go Browns. <laughs> <It is. laughs>